which states are financially friendly to people trying to live a solo lifestyle in the U.S. I am just trying to make it on my own, which as little struggle with as little struggle as possible. No wife, no kids, no roommates, no family, etc. But it seems like most living situations require dual or more incomes. And how do I make a solo lifestyle sustainable with low risk? I make forty-five thousand dollars a year, thirty male. And what I want to bring up about this is this is what this individual is trying to be, right? A hikamori. So a hikamori, also known as an acute social withdrawal, is total withdrawal from society in seeking extreme degrees of social isolation and confinement. Hikamori refers to both the phenomenon in general and the recluses themselves. Hikamori have been described as loners or modern-day hermits. Estimates suggest that half a million Japanese youths have become social recluses as well as more than half a million middle-aged individuals. So, these are specific criteria to more accurately identify a hikamori. Spending most of the day and nearly every day confined to home. Marked in persistent avoidance of social situations and social relationships. Social withdrawal symptoms causing significant functional impairment. Duration of at least six months. And no apparent physical or mental etiology to account for the social withdrawal symptoms. So... That is basically what this individual is trying to become or try to be, right? They don't care about having family or friends or relationships or whatever. They just want to be like, hey, where can I live that is financially feasible for me on $45,000 a year where I could just go do my own thing, right? So this person definitely knows exactly basically what they want in terms of like a lifestyle one which is good two a little bit depressing of a lifestyle but one at the very least you at least got a goal right so the main factors to really pay attention to achieving this type of a goal is one what is the cost of living situation that you can be okay with Right? Like, how much on average do you want to be like spending on like groceries? How much do you want to be spending on like utilities, etc.? Right? Next is basically the tax situation. You want to be living in a tax situation where there's very low state tax or better, no state tax. Next, you also want to be living in a state that, one, doesn't have that any taxes, but you also want the property tax situation to be very low as well because a lot of people do not pay attention to that when they move, but they can end up moving to like a no-tax state or a low-tax state, but then get slapped around by property taxes. It's like, well, what was the point of that, right? Which is a lot of people in Texas basically get slapped around by property taxes because it tends to be, I think, the second or the highest in the nation close to that so you got to be very careful about that not to mention the county that you move into can also tax you even in a no tax state so that's something to pay attention to as well now once you kind of like figure out that ideal situation basically a no tax state with low property taxes and the county that you live in is probably okay or doesn't really tax you like crazy or something then you got to really focus on, okay, what am I doing for a job and can I technically work anywhere? So for example, if this person can work like a remote job, making 45K a year, roughly speaking about that, then they can basically move into like the middle of nowhere and not really worry about having things around them because they're probably going to spend most of the time at their house and maybe just go to the grocery store to get groceries and that's basically about it. That might be like their ideal lifestyle. So if that's the case, they really also got to make sure that their income situation would allow them to even do that. Now, like a little bit lower on this post, the person says that they're not really in a skilled field, so they're not really attached to it, meaning that they could probably just keep applying for like remote jobs. And if that remote job basically allows them to live anywhere, then... That's probably the route that they should go, right? 
Because, like, here's the thing. I understand what this person is trying to, like, go after, right? They want to be left alone. They want to go do their own thing whenever they want to go do their own thing. If they want to go get groceries, they want to go get groceries. If they want to go drive somewhere, they want to go drive somewhere. Like, they want the complete freedom of them basically doing their own thing and not being bugged by anyone else. Completely understand. The thing is, you got to make sure that financially speaking, you can actually make this work, right? Because a lot of people misunderstand what it actually takes to achieve whatever goal that they end up having. I do like that this person is actually trying to come up with a plan to do it, but yeah, that's the main thing. Is your job remote? What is your cost of living situation ideally like or what you would want? Low taxes on all fronts, basically, or no taxes as much as possible. And that's basically it. Also, don't like be spending all of your money. That too. Let's see, Michigan is a mid-sized town. Grand Rapids, Lansing, Kalamazoo, affordable in the salary. This person says we'll look into that. Ba, 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 ba. A lot of people are like saying Grand Rapids is okay. Oklahoma is apparently super cheap. Okay. This person says, I live in greater Milwaukee in nice fixer uppers with good bones. Start around 120. I'm a 20-year-old with no partner, making just under 30K a year. But home buying is hopefully my future within the next five to seven years because I'm saving aggressively and the cost of living is pretty reasonable here. I'm guessing there's a lot of mid-sized cities in the Midwest that are similar. See, again, this is the thing, right? The cost of living really depends not just on the state, but where you decide to actually live. So for example, let's say that you have like two homes to potentially move into. One home is close to a Whole Foods. The other home is kind of close to a Walmart. Which one's going to have less cost of living? The one closer to the Walmart. But there's going to be a trade-off. There might be potentially more crime around that Walmart, more drug-related stuff around that Walmart, more criminal activity around that Walmart, because that's just typically how it is. So that's something that you got to worry about. There's always a trade-off, even with the whole cost of living breakdown. Now, what's even funnier, depending on where that Walmart is actually located, will also depend on that sort of stuff too. Right. So, for example, I went to like four or five different Walmarts just randomly, but they were in completely different locations. Right. One was a little bit more urban. One was kind of like a suburb. Another one was kind of like more like a suburb. One was more like in the country ish kind of stuff. Right. Where like basically you had to drive like 20 minutes, 30 minutes to that Walmart kind of thing. Like that's like the closest thing in that area. So. It was kind of interesting because the more urban one, the more one that had more population, more city, there was a lot of cop presence around that Walmart. In that Walmart, they checked your receipts constantly. Like it was crazy. They had police lights everywhere, making sure that they could see, like police lights with cameras on them that they could see in the parking lot everywhere, making sure nothing's going on. Suburb had maybe one cop or two cops at the Walmart, just like waiting around the rural one the one that's more like country basically nothing like pretty much no cop activity if there was a cop activity it'd basically be a cop car with no cop in it and you could just go into the walmart and out right like it was like completely hassle-free so that might be something that this person might want to look at to maybe look more so for a very rural location as long as their job allows them basically work anywhere because everything will be far cheaper in a rural area but the trade-off the biggest trade-off with moving to like a rural area is the cost of time and gas to travel to wherever you want to go but if you're basically a hikamori where you pretty much are a loner and you're basically not really going anywhere for the most part, 
that's pretty much an ideal situation for you because that cost of time and gas isn't really anything to you because you don't really go anywhere most of the time. You pretty much just stay at home. So that's something to also think about too, right? Because due to what this person is kind of wanting to be, like I said, that hikamori, it seems the ideal situation for this person is to find a place, a state that has no taxes, no county tax, very low property tax, move to a rural area where probably the closest thing to them is like a Walmart or Publix or something or Costco and that's it, all right? And also to have a remote job. If I was that person with those specific goals, with that specific financial situation, that's what I would do to reach my goal. If you want to learn how to get out of debt and how I got out of debt and grew my net worth, go down below. And feel free to like shoot us like an email or comment, whatever, about your financial situation, and we'll try to help you out.